it's uh, ironic that the one cancer, the one solid tumor that has the first indication of a immune product, Cipolucil T or Provenge, ends up being not as immunologically robust as we had hoped, and that's prostate cancer. We've been very fortunate in the sense that it's been a cancer that's been very responsive to hormonal therapy, but the idea that you can take a patient's own dendritic cells, educate them in culture, and reinfuse them, and that will lead to at least a 3.5 month survival benefit was probably the first of its kind and really revved up the community in terms of looking for alternative strategies that can be used as immune therapies. We've been doing immune therapies for probably almost a century and it's been peptide vaccines, DNA vaccines, uh, combination vaccines with radiation and chemotherapy. Nothing has ever shown a survival benefit and frankly, nothing has ever shown the robustness of the recent checkpoint inhibitors. So while Cipolucil T or Provenge actually showed a survival benefit, uh, I think a lot of people were somewhat disappointed and the patients included by the fact that we really didn't see an anti-tumor response. Patients live longer, but people who had an enormous tumor burden seemed to just have disease that continued to progress despite the longevity. Then we had what we thought would be a really win, real big winner, which was the PROSTVAC, which was a novel platform using a DNA transgene following a prime boost attempt, and then uh, had three co-stimulatory molecules. The phase two that was initially published showed a early survival benefit. However, the 1300 phase three randomized trial was very disappointing and didn't really live up to the expectation of improvement in overall survival or anti-tumor effect.